So for some of us, winter is coming. For others, it's here. You've seen the snow. You know, with winter, we might wonder, are there still insects, pests that can come into the home and cause trouble for us? Some might think that they die off or go into hibernation, but there's some that survive the winter. Today, we have with us Jennifer Gordon. She's our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. So Jennifer, welcome to the program again. Tell us when the weather gets cold, are there still pests to deal with? Sure, absolutely. Um, as temperatures are getting colder outside, there can actually be an influx of what we call occasional invaders. And these are insects and their relatives that are opportunistic pests. Uh, they're kind of like people in the sense that as the weather gets less hospitable outside, they start seeking more pleasant habitats. And that often leads these insects to find their way inside commercial buildings and homes. Sometimes we call this the fall crawl because as temperatures are starting to get cooler in the fall, we tend to see these occasional invaders coming inside. And, you know, some common occasional invaders are creatures like ladybugs, stink bugs, centipedes, crickets, and some other insects. And depending on where the building is and what the pest is, you can actually end up with quite a few of these critters coming inside. Uh, I remember one time when I was younger feeling something crawling on my skin under my shirt and I looked closer and it was a ladybug, you know, a little bit odd, but, but not too big of a deal. And then I felt another and another. And, and before I realized it, I had five or six ladybugs crawling all over me and it was just so weird. So when I started looking around the house, trying to figure out where they were coming from, I finally saw that there was some damage to my front door frame and there were hundreds of ladybugs trying to get into my house and away from the cold. And somehow I must've brushed up against them when I was coming in and that's how they ended up getting all over me. So you would think that they need to hibernate or they would die off. If they don't get inside, that's gonna happen, right? They're gonna die. Well, you know, some bugs, you know, there are different bugs and similar cold blooded animals such as centipedes and spiders that have different strategies for dealing with the cold. So some do hibernate and some do die off, but still there are others that try to escape the cold by finding shelter inside. And there are some other behaviors that some, but not all insects can perform to survive cold weather, such as aggregation. And aggregation occurs when a bunch of the same species, sometimes hundreds of insects uh, huddle close together. And these huddles provide many different benefits, such as regulating temperature, preventing them from drying out. And this ultimately helps them to make it through the winter. Good information. I never knew, never thought about that. The, the huddling, the creating that body heat. So you mentioned um, with the ladybugs, they got on your clothes. How else might they get in? Sure. So these occasional invaders are likely getting in through openings in the building, such as cracks and crevices underneath the door, vents, uh, other openings in buildings, such as those that might be made around pipes. But there is also possibility that there's been some settling in the foundation of the building and the insects are making their way in that way. Uh, it could be like my ladybug story. So maybe there is damage to a window or a door frame that is creating a gap large enough to allow these insects to get in. Um, it could just be that the door or window is not creating a good enough seal and the insects make their way in that way. Insects are excellent survivors. So basically any gap in a building that the bug can fit into could become a possible passageway inside. You know, I have to say that of all these you're talking about, the stink bugs, probably harmless. They won't bite you. They're the worst for me and we get them occasionally in our home. To what extent can the infestation become? You know, stink bugs are, are really interesting, but I agree, you know, they can look, you know, pretty monstrous, especially up close. But depending on the species, you may have one or two individuals that make it in, but sometimes you can have a lot. Uh, ladybugs and brown marmorated stink bugs are a couple of examples where you can have hundreds of individuals. And these insects aren't reproducing in your building. They're just trying to escape the inhospitable weather, but it can be really alarming when you see a bunch of these creatures roaming around a business, uh, especially in food preparation facilities and restaurants. You don't wanna see any insects crawling around. So you mentioned food prep areas. I assume that these animals get in, these insects get inside. They're just looking for a meal as well. What do they eat? Sure. So, you know, there are a ton of different insects and their relatives that could be making it in. So it really does depend. Uh, something like a house cricket might be eating organic fabrics made out of wool or silk. But those ladybugs and stink bugs we've been talking about are not there to eat anything. They really are just trying to find a place to hunker down and make it through the winter. But it really can depend on the species. 
okay, they get inside, it's cold, there's snow banks out there. How do you get rid of them? Just catch them and toss them? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, that really is the, the $1 million question that, that we talk about every month or so. Uh, the answer to this can really depend on the species. So a good identification may be critical. Whenever possible, capture a specimen, put it in some kind of an airtight container and freeze it. That way, if you need to, you can give it to an expert to identify. But typically, stopping occasional invaders from getting inside actually starts outside you need to keep moist, favorable harborages away from buildings. So things like mulch, weeds, bushes, really close to a building can serve as bridges that allow occasional invader populations to grow near the building and eventually allow them to get in. Additionally, some insects are attracted to light, so changing the light source from a white light to a soft yellow may prevent those insects from being attracted to your building. Uh, you also need to figure out how the insects are getting in and preventing that from happening. Because if you don't fix the source, then you have the potential that others are gonna make their way inside. So things like window screens, door sweeps, similar devices that can keep these creatures out. Additionally, you may need to caulk cracks and crevices or possibly even contact building management or a general contractor to fix much bigger issues. However, just like you said, physically removing any bug or their relatives that you may encounter may be a really great way of getting rid of them. So vacuums and shop vacs work really great. Uh, you don't want to infest your vacuum though, so you need to be careful. Um, a tightly secured stocking on the end of a vacuum hose can capture any insects and prevent them from entering the vacuum. And you need to make sure that when you're disposing of the vacuum bag or any of the contents that may be collected, that you get rid of them immediately and in a way that you get rid of all of the individuals. So take that vacuum outside near a dumpster, dispose of them away from the building when possible, and be especially careful when vacuuming those stink bugs. Like their name suggests, they can release a really nasty smell that might actually end up ruining your vacuum. And also, if you find a lot of individuals, you wanna make sure that you don't kill them and leave a bunch of dead bugs behind because a bunch of dead insects can cause other pests to thrive. So if the infestation is really bad or you just can't seem to figure out what's going on, you may need to contact a pest management professional or myself to come help you out. I guess I have a confession to make, Jennifer. Usually when I catch a stink bug, it goes down the toilet. There goes my water bill. So. <laughs> okay, our last question is, we always talk about health and safety. What does this mean for public health in buildings? Absolutely. So the good news about occasional invaders is that they're generally just nuisance pests. You know, they're irritating more than anything. However, they can be a sign that your building has damage that you're not aware of. Additionally, some of the insects we've talked about today can cause other types of damage. Uh, for instance, when ladybugs are threatened, they can release these chemicals that can stain fabric and stink bugs can release alarm chemicals that can really stink up a building and strong smells can negatively impact a business's bottom line. Good information, Jennifer. Thank you so much for this today. Absolutely.